Tarehe 30 Desemba mwaka 2002 wanajeshi waliandaa gwaride la mwisho la heshima kwa amri jeshi mkuu aliyekuwa kistaafu Daniel Arab Moi. Gwaride lilipasa kusalia kama kumbukumbu baada ya uongozi wa miaka 24. Msali ya Mdavadi alihudhuria sherehe hizo lakini sio kwa furaha when he's leaving you have some moments of anxiety you know personal anxiety uh, what will it be what kind of regime is coming in is this going to be a situation where there's victimization or is this going to be a situation where the rule of law uh, will be followed Ni chama alicho kienzi mui, chama cha baba na mama, chama cha kanu. Kabla ya uchaguzi wa mwaka 2002, wandani wake wa karibu wa kisiasa, ikiwa ni pamoja na makamu wake wa rais Professor George Saitoti, walikuwa wamemtoroka na kujiunga na chama cha LDP, Liberal Democratic Party chama ambacho kiliungana baadaye na chama cha NAK na kisha wapinzani wote wakaamua kuungana pamoja na kuunda chama cha NAK muungano ambao ulipelekea kushindwa kwa chama cha Kanu kwenye uchaguzi wa mwaka 2002 The people of Kenya have spoken even for him uh, there were anxieties i'm sure that uh, how he, how is he going to be treated by the new regime are they going to 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 settle scores from a very personal viewpoint or are they going to be uh, to look at things objectively uh, so these kind of anxieties uh, were there uh, not only in my mind but also in the minds of so many other people Wachambuzi wa kisiasa wanasema mzee Moi alijaribu kwa hali na mali kupambana na muungano huo wa kisiasa ambao marehemu makamu wa rais kijana wa Malwa aliutaja kama unbogable. Wandani wa karibu wa rais Moi ambaye alikuwa akijitambulisha kama profesa wa siasa za Kenya wanasema ilikuwa ni mara ya kwanza kwa Moi kucheza karata zake visivyo He was a, a clever and intelligent enough to see it coming the end of Kanu coming at the back of his mind unless he was thinking very differently he must have known that <coughs> that eventually Kanu would be out of power and in Africa an independence party that is gone out of power to try and make a comeback Uh, is an uphill to the task. Rais Moi alichukua hatamu za uongozi mwaka 1978 baada ya kifo cha mwanzilishi wa taifa Hayati Mzee Jomo Kenyatta. Na hapa kwamba nitakuwa mwaminifu kwa Jamhuri ya Kenya. Pindi tu baada ya Kenyatta kufariki, Moi aliapishwa siku hiyo na mkuu wa sheria Charles Njonjo. Daniel Arab Moi is now president of Kenya for the next 90 days until an election is held for the future president of Kenya. Makucha ya mzee Moi aliyekuwa mwalimu wa shule ya msingi hayakujitokeza awali na wengine walimuona mpule. Lakini kumbe alikuwa tu akipanga mikakati yake ya kisiasa kisiri. Na baada ya siku tisini Moi alichaguliwa amiri jeshi mkuu na akawa rais wa pili wa Kenya. Lakini mabwenyenye waliokuwa wanajulikana kama Kiambu Mafia walikuwa wamejaribu juu chini kumfungia milango ya ikulu. Na ili kuonekana kana kwamba alikuwa akifuata mienendo ya Kinyata. Moi alianzisha msimamo wa kisiasa wafuata na yeye. Lakini waliofahamu mtindo wake wa kisiasa wanasema uamuzi huo ulikuwa tu 
ni wakuwafumba watu macho. Moi was a very well informed uh, uh, president. Moi cons consulted. Moi could take even, could even call in the, on matters of provincial administration. He could call even an assistant chief. Moi alitumia sana utawala wa mikoa katika uongozi wake. Machifu na manaibu wao, wakuu wa tarafa, wakuu wa wilaya na wakuu wa mikoa walimfahamisha kila kitu kilichokuwa kikiendelea mashinani. Akiwa na umri wa miaka na miwili, kuvu zake zilisikika kote nchini. Ambapo alianzisha miradi mbalimbali na kushughulikia masuala kadhaa. Moyes way of running uh, government was eventually he made the final decision himself. But 1978 became a very mammoth year for this nation because you have brought in into the fray of leadership a man and a character who holds both providential lack and marginalization by the leaders. He combines the two to take a nation and unfortunately he goes through an experience between 1982 and 1984 where some people even thought they should kick him out and others thought they should overthrow him. And Moy was able to sustain himself during those four or so years. Alitumia mbinu za aina yake kuwakanganya wengi ikiwa ni pamoja na kuwaweka karibu watu waliokuwa viongozi katika serikali ya mzee Kinyata Charles Njonjo alikuwa ni mmoja wao Jiji Karioki pia alisalia katika mstari huo wa kisiasa pia rais msafu Emilio Mwai Kibaki ambaye alimchagua kama makamu wake wa rais Hadi sasa wengi wamesalia na kumbukumbu za jinsi wa wili hao walivyokuwa kisafiri hapa moja kwenye gari rasmi la rais Moi tried to learn as much as he could on what was happening in the country He was a stickler for detail, uh, an excellent timekeeper, um, and a teetotaler, and a man who would follow issues to the last detail. Lakini jaribio la mapinduzi la mwaka 1982 lilibadilisha kabisa msimamo wa uongozi wa Moi. 1982 coup uh, changed Moi's strategy completely uh, because it even it rearranged his priorities uh, before then he was he, he was his, his approach to public life public affairs was different from after the coup because after the coup he realized that he had enemies within so he had to try and reorganize the government to his own liking that is the time that switched moy on to become the dictator that in fact tortured me jailed me and isolated me not only from my own uh, compatriots but even from my own family ni mapinduzi yaliyosababisha Moi kunua makali yake na kuamua kuwafurusha walionekana kumpinga au wale waliosemekana kuwa wasaliti. Charles Njonjo alikuwa mmoja wao. Na hapo ndipo Moi alipoamua kuachagua serikalini watu kutoka mkoa wa bonde la Ufa. Nicholas B. Wood, au Totoman, alikuwa mmoja wa wandani wa Rais Moi waliojumuishwa serikalini. Moi pia alianza kutilia maanani zaidi swala la usalama hasa katika ukusanyaji wa taarifa za kijasusi. He was much more careful on uh, on what was happening the police the entire security structure was reorganized the, the army was reorganized everything everything changed. Moi alianza kuonyesha ushawishi wake na alionekana kwenda kinyume naye alijionea. Moi relied heavily on the intelligence system uh, at that time it was called um, the special branch uh, moi relied very heavily on on on, uh, on this system to help him make his decisions first of all he was a very early riser moi would be 
up at about five in the morning. Uh, and he would have his uh, very early meetings with his security chiefs uh, from about 5.30, 6 a.m. in the morning. When the rest of the country is now coming in, when other people are coming in, maybe for, for either cabinet meetings or other sessions, which start at, at uh, uh, 8 or 7.30, by that time, Moy has had his brief with all his uh, uh, security teams. Mabadiliko ya katiba yalimpa uhuru wa kusali uongozini chini ya chama cha kanu ambacho kilisalia chama tawala kwa muda mrefu. Kipenge cha katiba cha 2A kilipenyezwa kwenye katiba na hivyo basi kugeuza Kenya kuwa taifa linaloongozwa na chama kimoja. He tightened the control both on the government and the political party. He reorganized Kanu political party to give it more power. Uh, then it's, it's, you know, it is after 82 that we had the, the famous committee of, uh, of 10, the disciplinary committee was brought into Kanu. Alianza kuongoza kwa nguvu za inayaki. Sauti pingamizi zilikabili wa vilivyo. Na matese wa inayaki yalitolewa kwa wapinzani. It was a very difficult time, of course there were those arrests, uh, if I give my personal uh, experience, I was arrested so many times, had so many cases, I don't know which part of the country uh, where I had not been taken to court or taken into a prison or a police station, uh, so it was constant. In my offices, you know, uh, because I used to carry, carry out, carry, I used to have a, a legal practice, you would have, I would be working and a policeman is standing in my office, or sitting uh, at the door, you know, grabbed a chair and sat at the door, not talking, just telling you, you continue with your work. Uh, and they stood there watching every little movement that uh, uh, one was making. So it was not an easy time. Shutuma did your own goes, you are more easily on Gezeka, Kila Uchao, Nazili to Kakoale and Baha Kutarajiwa. Katika Vioviku. Wanafunzi na wahadhiri waliweka maisha ya hatarini kupigania mabadiliko. Viongozi wa kidini walishirikiana na wanasiasa katika harakati za kutaka mfumo wa vyama vingi kurejeshwa nchini Kenya. Hata hivyo, wasomi, viongozi wa kanisa na wanasiasa walitambua muda mfupi baadaye kuwa serikali ya rais ilikuwa tayari kukabiliana nao. Baadhi yao walilazimika kutoroka nchini. Walio kamatoa, walijipata kwenye vyumba vya matesu. Vilivukua katika jumba la nyayo na kisha kufikisha mahakamani na kwa haraka kuhukumiwa kifungo gerezani. Moya liunda sheria ya usalama wa umma na alitumia sheria hiyo kuwafunga watu bila kuwashtaki mahakamani. That was the law then. I don't think President Moy did anything outside the law in terms of arrests and detentions mm -hmm. because there was a provision in the law mm -hmm. that a person shall be detained by the president it was in the law he found it in the law that constitution allowed Moy to make decrees uh, that constitution allowed him to make pronouncements without uh, certain levels of consultation as currently provided for in the current constitution uh, Moy could uh, pronounce your dismissal through radio and indeed many ministers uh, during his tenure lost their jobs by just hearing it over uh, the radio hata hivyo harakati za mabadiliko zilizidi uku sauti za waliompinga moi zikiendelea kusikika uchaguzi wa mlalongo mnamo mwaka 1988 haukuwa wakuridhisha kwa kanu na uliongeza idadi ya wale waliotaka kurejesho kwa mfumo wa vyama vingi uchaguzi huo ulimruhusu Moi kuachagua wabunge aliowataka kwenye bunge la sita. More people were saying if you can see really a long line being declared the loser and the small line the short line being declared the winner. There is really something wrong 
in our political spectrum. We need to change it so that it is the majority that takes the day. Marehemu Kenneth Matiba alikuwa miongoni mwa wale walioathirika pakubwa na uchaguzi wa mwaka 1988. Matiba ambaye wakati huu alikuwa waziri aliondolewa kama mwenyekiti wa Kanu katika eneo bunge la Kiharu kwenye uchaguzi wa Mlulungu. Huo ulikuwa mwisho wa safari ya Matiba katika siasa za Kanu. Muda mfupi baadaye Matiba alijiuzulu kutoka baraza la mawaziri na kisha alifurushwa kutoka katika chama cha Kanu na kupoteza kiti chake cha ubunge cha Kiharu. He made it very difficult for anybody to say anything unless you are of course parroting what he had said before or you are court poet singing praise to him anything else was unacceptable mawaji aliyokuwa waziri wa masuala ya kigeni robert uku na alexander muge iliongeza idadi ya waliomtaka mui na chama chake cha kanu kuondoka mamlakani wapinzani hao wa mui walianda mkutano mnamo julai 7 mwaka 1990 kuishinikiza serikali lakini moi hakutaka kusikia hayo We applied for the permit under my own signature by the way But for the 77 meeting it came kunji but that one never happened the government did not acknowledge the government did not refuse <coughs> they just kept quiet Now that the time I think they were planning to arrest us. And on the 4th July that is 3 days before the Sabasaba meeting we were arrested. Baadhi wa changanuzi wa siasa wanaamini kuwa kufikia wakati huu Moi alijua kuwa muda wake wa uongozi ulikuwa na karibia kukamilika. Na aliamua kufanya kile ambacho hakikutarajiwa na wengi. Mnamo Desemba mwaka 1991, Moi aliamua kuondoa sheria kipengee cha 2A na kuruhusu mfumo wa vyama vingi kurejea nchini. Fungue section hiyo. Na nauliza nyinyi nyote kukaa na mimi tuende barabara yetu tukiwa kanu pamoja. Moi was a very uh, dominant president and he literally controlled Kano. People were scared of speaking out fully. So even that conference uh, at Kasarani uh, people had been choreographed to say that uh, uh, we should remain a one party uh, state. We knew that people would be saying that but at some stage moi was going to turn around so that the presentation would have been that he as moi has seen the future has seen that multipartism whatever and he came out and said i must save you as a country i know you love me i know you love kanu i know you love that but the world has changed lakini aliyofuata baada ya mabadiliko hayo ya katiba Yalidhihirisha kuwa Moi alikuwa mwanasiasa stadi na aliyekuwa na mipango na njama za aina yake. Na ukweli. Huko wanasiasa wa upinzani wakisherekea kufutiliwa mbali kwa kisheria hiyo ya 2A, Moi alikuwa anaweka mikakati ya kuhakikisha kuwa Kanu inasalia mamlakani hata baada ya uchaguzi wa mwaka 1992. Chama cha upinzani cha Ford kilipata uongozi mkono mkubwa kote nchini lakini Moi bado walikuwa na mbinu ya kukabiliana na wapinzani wake. Uh, special branch was now why, uh, well aware of, of the discussions and the divisions that were emerging from Ford. So quite a number of them traveled to uh, to the United Kingdom and told Matiba that you know this is your chance. Uh, and, and, and secondly you know they told him that you know if he did not take his chance the, then Mwai Kibaki was going to to eclipse him uh, uh, and uh, Matiba was taken in uh, but not absolutely until the day when he came back and was received uh, in a way that I don't think a leader has been received in Kenya until 
uh, the time when Raila also was received? Every status quo situation, it uses a method that will scatter the opposition. Jaramogi Odinga is slightly older than Kenneth Matiba. So you put into the head of Kenneth Matiba that it is time for Jaramogi Odinga Odinga to go where? Go home. So when he's coming, I'm younger and he's old and he has had his time. He needs to go away. So that's what was done. Kenneth Matiba was given that impression just by some statements, some statements. And then when he came, he had a very good reception at the airport, our president. Now, when he saw that reception, every politician, by the way, is moved by the ground. The one who came waving. And then they come waving. Uh -huh. They were blackguards, yes. waving him to be the president. Yes. The first thing he did when he now landed in Ford was a big quarrel with Jaramogi Odinga. And that trap caused, caused a split in Ford. Then you ended up having Ford Kenya, and then you now ended up having, having Ford uh, Asili. Matisha Mwaka 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 Mwaka